Hi everybody, my name is Max, this is Alex. We were having a conversation about something that she saw on Reddit and I felt like we kind of needed to bring this to the people and expand on what it is that she found. So Alex, tell the people what it is that you found. So as you all can actually see right here on the screen, this is a post that was on Reddit, the subreddit called Black Men. No more kindness like this anymore. It says, I remember when I was a kid in high school, it was right after Hurricane Katrina. Some Louisianan people moved next to us in Texas. I will talk to them and babysat their kids. They had a huge family, huge. My grandpa had eight brothers and sister and they had more. Um, anyways, I had my first date, but I was poor, so my mom couldn't afford to get me a suit to go to the dance. So I walked next door and asked the Louisiana people if they had anything they didn't wear anymore. I told them the story, and the old man said, come on. So I got in the car, and he took me to a half-price outfit thrift store. And I'll never forget what he told me in the car, too. It was a Bible verse. He told me the story of a man going around looking for help, but no one helped him. No, uh, everyone was nice about it, saying, oh, I'll pray for you. Oh, I'll pray for you. But that old man said he did not need prayer. He needed help. Then we got to the store and he paid for my whole suit. My mom gave me a chewing out after for taking this kind of help, but that ish left a mark. I ain't never seen kindness like that anymore. Even myself, I am scared to help people. People take advantage of kindness so easily. Normally, it's only the old people who give kindness like that now. Um, I felt that this was a really important little lesson about helping others. And um, we also had a discussion about the grammatical errors Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to discuss that part of it, how that affected you, what you felt was the message. We'll go to what you had first, and then I'll talk about the other part too. Okay, so... The overall story of what it is that's taking place. The overall story I thought was amazing in the sense of him reminiscing about someone helping someone else out in need. And the need for that kind of attitude in the community, especially in low income, poor communities. And we, you know, because we are black and we come from uh, uh, black families, we're concerned about black people in that regard. Um, I have to say that I can expand my thinking and also say that if you are poor and white or you're poor and Latino, or wherever you are in this country and you're poor, you may need some help from somewhere, from someone at some time. But there's also a responsibility for you to help yourself. And that's where our conversation kind of took a turn because Alex was talking about when she was in school and the people in the class and what they were doing. So do you want to talk about that? Um. Yeah. I mean, overall, I'm more for the idea of you can't keep blaming the white man. You can't keep blaming someone for your misfortunes. Of course, now were there certain things that were put into place that helped to aid you being in the position that you are currently? Of course, yes, no one is denying that. But what we will not be doing, in my eyes, is keep blaming someone for their own misfortunes. Um, so like for me, when I would be in class, you know, I was mostly A's and B's, okay? You get a C here and there. But I tried my hardest to learn the material. I tried as much as I could to make sure that I was able to succeed so that I could, as people say, go to college, get the education, etc. I then would notice that you had multiple people. And let's say out of 100%, maybe you only had 10% of those people, 15%. But it was still uh, quite a few people who would go be disruptive. They're making drum beats on their desk. They're doing any and everything but actually paying attention to the lesson. They're doing any and everything but actually doing their homework. And then they're going to go and say, but the system failed me. Well, not necessarily you failed yourself. 
You can't keep saying that, oh man, the white man didn't help me out or oh man, because other people have all these other resources and, but you had the resources and you chose not to do anything about it. Even when I would have after school stuff, um, I would purposely, it was for Spanish, math and science. When I was in high school, I would purposely wait after school. I'll be by my lockers, my homeboys, we chilling, we kicking it. And then once the school cleared out, we went to these particular teachers. We went to these particular classes that we needed help in. And these teachers were willing to help us. Where did all the other people who were so cool for school go? They went out, went and hung out, went to McDonald's, did whatever else. And then they're going to turn around and be like, man, but it's, I, it's going to be difficult to graduate. Oh, man, but I don't know. Well, why didn't you go and get the help when it was available to you? And this is what I'm saying. And this is... This is how our conversation even got to this point, because as you all can see on here, I'm reading this thing and the grammar is terrible. Like the word remember, not spelled correctly. Hurricane, it has high crane contra contrina. It's not even spelled correctly. And Hurricane Katrina was a word. It was a, it was a, a phrase that was everywhere on the news. It was literally everywhere. You know, so it's like, how do you not have this? Then I started going through the comments, you know, listening, you know, reading what he said and seeing what people said about that intent, you know, in general. But then, you know, someone made a comment. They were like, yo, you know, not not to be mean or disrespectful, but why not try to, you know, get some grammar courses going in and all that. And then this person went and called this person an MF, said it's people like you who always got something to say, you know. I, when I was in school, they put all the black kids into special ed. So this made me wonder, you had to have been at least mid, you have to have been late thirties, if not at the lowest 40 ish years old. And you're blaming the white man on why you can't read. You can't, you're blaming the white man on why your grammar is improper. And you're saying it's because you went to, you graduated from school. How many years ago? If you have enough energy to get onto Reddit, you should have enough energy to pick up a book. You should have enough energy. I mean, heck, they even said that in terms of like 12th graders, a lot of people have like the education of a third grader because they're just passing people along. But at some point you have to be like, you know what? My, my reading difficulty, I have this issue. I have this issue. You want to know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and read. Let me go ahead, pick up a book. Let me go ahead and do something. You know, even myself, I swap numbers around and swap letters around. Dyslexia and I have the ones for the numbers. But what do I do to try to combat that? I read and I read aloud because that's what I read is the solution for that because it's really nothing else. It's not some magic pill or maybe you take some ginger and then now you're just going to be able to know how to read. No, this is something that you have to physically do. And I noticed that people don't want to do it and then they want to blame somebody else. I agree 100% on that aspect of it. And the, the, then that conversation took a turn because the part that bothers me is the number of young black men, especially, but young men coming from poor communities that are committing crime in the streets. Why are they doing that? They're doing that because they don't have a good home life. They don't have good education. But it's, again, I have a tendency to agree with Alex. I knew a lot of people that came from the hood and they made better for themselves because they found ways to make better for themselves. And it didn't mean sticking a gun in somebody's face to rob them or carjack them and then to turn around and make the excuse that that's the only thing I can do because I'm an ignorant dummy does not wash in today's world, especially right now, today. There are so many different ways for you to do something different. We're going to probably do uh, several videos on this and we're going to explore ways that a young person coming up on O Block or down in some place in Winter Garden, Winter Garden, Florida or in bad area of Memphis or in Houston in one of the wards. All these areas are producing the same guy over and over again. And he has more interest in having a gun in his hand. He has more interest in flipping on his phone. He has more interest in taking something from somebody that's a legitimate individual. A lot of times for people in their own community. And we have to change that. 
And you have to have a realization that every time you do that, you're tearing down yourself, you're tearing down your family, you're tearing down your community. And there's a certain element of people out there that want you to do this. And you're doing the work of the devil. Uh, in my mind, I get so angry at seeing these young brothers that have been running around out here killing that I call them death condoms because they put a gun in your hand in your community. You're playing with guns in your drill rap videos. You say that the op, your opposition, is a guy who lives two or three blocks from you that looks like you, has the same hairstyle you got, Listen to the same music you listen to, yet that's your opposition. But you have no realization that there are a, lot, a myriad of forces that are working against you. But the main force that's working against you is you. That you can't look yourself in the mirror as a 14-year-old to 20-year-old young black man in a poor community and think that there's a different path for you to take than to join a gang sell drugs in your own community, rob, rape, steal, and destroy your community. And then guess what? Yeah, there is a decision that's made in these municipalities for how much money goes into these communities. There's a decision made for the number of teachers and how the teachers get paid. And all these municipalities don't have the amount of money they need in order to give a better education to you in those communities. You could probably make a strong argument for that. But you also can make a strong argument that now you could take your cell phone and you can learn about things that you can do or you can get on Amazon and you could order materials to help you be a better student. And the question would be, well, why would you do that? Because that is the betterment of you, the betterment of your family, and the betterment of, you, of society. And there's two young black girls that just was in the media. Remember the ones I showed you mm -hmm. that developed this uh, very high level of math? Mm -hmm. And I think one was like nine. The other one was 11 or something. Mm -hmm. Were they sisters? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. But, but I, don't know. I mean, this is going on. So I don't think these kids came from some high highfalutin area. But what they did have was they had people that cared about them enough to put knowledge and information and education into the head. And this video is about you making a decision to do something other than destroy your community and destroy yourself. Every time that I go onto YouTube or look at these news feeds, crime sells for eyes for local news broadcasts. So I look at Memphis. Right now I'm looking at the Memphis trial where the murder of young Dolph. I see nothing but a lot of black people. I see the black people that committed the crime and been accused of this crime. I see the uh, uh, guy, Yo Gotti, that supposedly might have allegedly been involved with ordering the death of young Dolph. I see the shooters. And I'm just heartbroken that it just, the same scenario is playing itself out over and over and over again. And this video is about trying to get you to open your eyes to the idea that this is the very last thing that you need to do. I, what I would like to see is like a three year to five year stand down with all the gangs, all the street thugs, all the people that are ripping and tearing and doing all the shit they're doing try to move in a different direction. And guess what? And this is the best part for all you brothers out here that are saying, well, that's bullshit, I, I can't do that. Sure you can, because in your community, you got brothers and sisters all around you that go and show up for regular work. They're some of the people that you victimize. Like the lady that went and shot the woman in, in, in Memphis because she had a long-standing kind of feud with the lady we find out later, but also because she didn't give her some chicken wings. You know, we could go on and on with all these different cases of violence taking place. The Juneteenth celebration that just happened over here in, uh, in our area. 
somebody got shot for no damn reason. Why would you bring a loaded weapon to a celebration of our history? Then thus you are ignorant, stupid, and you don't care about yourself. You don't care about the community. There are a number of things out there that could be a different path for you to take. And not most people take it. There's only a small percentage of people that are actually committing these crimes in these communities. And unfortunately, they are letting a lot of young people back out on the street that did a gun crime and they got, a, they got an ankle monitor on. And what do they do? Go back and they do another gun crime. All right? Maybe even murder somebody when you should never got back out on the street. And we also know that there's a lot of data that shows that many of the people that are going in and out of prison, especially with very young, when, they, when you go and you do an evaluation of where they are educationally, this is what Alex was talking about, they're not even at a third grade le reading level. So it's a culmination of a lot of things, but today is a day to look at how we can cha change this. Black people only make up 13% of the population in the United States, but, but, but represent 50 to 60% of the people that are in prison? That's ridiculous. And the, what's amazing is, is as you watch these videos, as I have watched these videos, you see that a lot of the arresting officers, judges, uh, 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 bailiff people, a lot of them are black in a lot of these communities. So it's not like it's a situation where you're just being harassed and overlooked, overly policed by racist cops. I'm sure that there's still some that are out there. We know that there is. But what's hurting us more is the young brothers that are part of gangs, are, are in street thugs, young people that are going and robbing people's houses. All this kind of stuff has to come to an end. I can promise you that if you look historically, there's never been a time where black people have victimized each other more than they're doing now. So essentially, the people that manipulate you, that, that have helped to not give you the resources, that wanna have private prisons just for you, now, and now you got guns flooding into your community, make no mistake, that's not an accident. We also know the drugs coming in the community, if you look into the whole story of Freeway Ricky Ross, you know those drugs came from the United States government in some cases. And that's the whole Contra, uh, uh, Iran Contra affair and the drugs that went along with it. And if you read and start learning how to read, you start to understand the bigger picture and how you fit in that picture. And if we're only 13% and we got 50 to 60% of people in the jails, we're going to drop down to 11%, 9% because you're you're taking such a large element of people that would be otherwise be productive to be unproductive, murder each other. They can't have kids because they're dead. You can't have kids because you're in prison. Do you see this road that we're on? It's an ugly circle. And you can get off of that circle by educating yourself, by understanding your history. And above all else, loving yourself, respecting the man next to you, working with the man next to you that lives in your community, respecting older people in the community, not victimizing them. If we put these data points together, we can actually make something happen. I'm going off on a tangent a little bit, but it really bothers me to see this much stuff go on with brothers and sisters. And I will hand it over to Alex, but I'll say one more thing. Let's keep talking. And that is, if you have not and this is especially for all you young brothers out there that are committing crime in your own community, that are gangbangers, that have been in and out of jail, that have are 15, 16 years old and you already got gun charges. You need to watch They Cloned Tyrone. Buy a copy for yourself on Amazon. You know, uh, look at it any way you can and keep watching it until you finally get the message that they're trying to tell you. They clone Tyrone is a focal point for you to understand how you are in the position that you're in. And unless you have an understanding of that, you're never going to be able to break this circle of violence 
in your own community that's destroying your own community. I heard a police officer who was black from Alabama and a 19 year old had killed a 15 year old girl there. I think he personally knew the girl and he was very upset. And he says, I'm going to say what nobody ever says. Young black men, when they're not killing each other, they're killing their own kids or the young people or little kids in the community and women. That's what's happening here. You basically are doing the job of the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan and racist people in the history of the United States were killing black people and destroying communities. And we still haven't got to the bottom of all these communities, like the Tulsa massacre or what went on in Lake Lanier in Georgia or the hundreds of other towns where black people were strung up, their property was taken and now you're doing it. You have to think. You got this Glock. It's got a Glock switch on it. You're 15 years old. You're 17 years old. You're 19 years old. What are you doing? And in the midst of all that, you think that the regular guy is the sucker? No, you're the sucker. Because the regular guy is the guy that when you go down to the chicken joint, before you go on your robbery spree or afterwards, that's the regular guy that comes right from your community that decided that he was gonna get a regular job and feed your trifling ass that's out there committing crime. When you go and you have to get on a bus to go to a location to steal, there's a regular Joe that's driving that bus, right? Uh, every aspect of your life it's regular people that are going and showing up to do the regular jobs while you think that somehow or another you don't have to follow the rule. That somehow or another, because of what happened to you, you need to go and destroy your own community and come up with the most bullshit excuses on why you're doing it. I'm to asking you, I'm begging you to learn to love yourself to start reading and understanding history and understanding the importance in your place in history. Here's a picture for you. One of the words that this, this man said always stuck with me my whole life. If you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. And I'm hard pressed to see the difference between the people that are in Washington, that are politicians, that vote against putting money into the community to help you go for after school programs, that always vote against helping regular people, but steal themselves all the time. You find about how they're stealing, making millions, doing background deals and under the table deals with, uh, with stock manipulation and all the different things that you see politicians do. And then I look at you and I said, I'm looking at the same person that doesn't think they have to follow any rules, that thinks they can just go out and do whatever they want. There's a price to be paid for everything that you do. And you're destroying your own community. You're destroying the future of people in the community. And we're trying to find a way to get you to open your eyes to the fact that you're doing this. Let us know what you think down below. Deuces, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I would greatly appreciate it if you can actually support my little small business called Latrice Limited. It is on latricelimited.com. So as you can see right here, I actually sell candles and a wide variety of other items as well. This is my big forehead, okay? Um, but I actually wanna show you just a couple of different items that I do sell. Um, this is actually going to be a part of my soap collection that I have. As you can see, I have a variety of different soaps on here. I actually have two pages worth of soaps and um, everything is handmade, okay? Natural, clean ingredients as well. Um, you can also see right here, these are my candles, all right? They're all handmade, everything. Vanilla, sweet roses, uh, sage and vanilla, 
vanilla and sweet roses are actually my favorite scents that I do have. I also have a few other items on here. I'm actually going to go and show you all the bath bombs that I do have. As you all can see, there's eucalyptus and sage, uh, sweet pea harmony, and so many more. And then we're just going to finish off on the gift sets that I have. There's a variety of them from like the big ones like this for 45. And then you have some of the smaller ones and you have these itty bitty ones down here that includes this essential oil blends. Definitely shop with your girl definitely help your girl out i would greatly appreciate it this is like my little baby over here okay <laughs> um i would greatly appreciate it and enjoy